Hello and welcome to this Formlabs webinar. This is a shortened version of the original broadcast. If you'd like to view the content in full, please click on the link below. Uh, welcome everyone in this um, new webinar from Formlabs. Um, today we're going to be talking about um, two different 3D printing technologies, um, selectively the sintering and stereolithography, and we'll be covering some of the basics on uh, what they are, what they do, and what to use them from for and um, we're going to help you also decide like what is the best um, technology for your special use case. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, I will introduce the speakers. So um, I am Maïdi Latouche. I am the product marketing manager for SLS here at Formlabs. Um, and today um, I will be joined by Alex. Um, Alex is an applications engineer with a Bachelor of Science in Applied Technology. Um, he has um, over five years of experience in additive manufacturing. And today he's joining us to um, explain a little bit everything um, to you about both of those technologies. Um, on the next slide, I will cover um, how the, the agenda is gonna go. Um, so first of all, we're gonna have a short introduction after what we'll, we'll dive um, in both technologies. First, stereolithography, which is our uh, resin technology and SLS, which works with powders. Um, then we'll have a, a deep dive on the, the webinars, the webinar, excuse me, the materials. So for both technologies, uh, what is the range of materials that we have? What properties do they have? And what kind of applications they can be used for? Um, and then we'll have some parts on use cases and user stories. Just giving a quick overview on uh, what Formlabs currently offers here. Um, so we have a pretty wide uh, selection on, on the SLA front. You know, we have a, our desktop systems with, with Form 3 Plus. Our sort of bench top larger format SLA systems with Form 3L and 3BL, um, and then our selective laser sintering uh, system, the, the Fuse, and, and its complementary uh, post processing system, the SIFT. Um, so, really, you know, the, the main goal of uh, you know what we do here is you know we we provide you know the hardware, the software, materials for for everything from you know prototyping figurines to you know short run production uh, of, of end use parts. Um, doing this for about a decade, uh, if you see some, some factoids down there on the bottom, you know, uh, 100,000 printers uh, sold, you know, 100 million prints uh, total to date, uh, you know, tons of materials, tons of global offices, lots of employees. Um, so, you know, we are a, a pretty big uh, player in the space for sure. Um, so just sort of jumping right into it with with SLA, um, and just to give you, a, a, you all a, a brief history lesson on uh, the evolution of our, our SLA product lineup. Um, so we've, we've, like I said, we've been doing this for about 10 years. Uh, it's all started in, in 2012 with Form 1. Uh, Form 1 was a product that was sort of uh, started on Kickstarter and, and the rocket ship sort of took off from there. Um, and we've been sort of constantly iterating, um, you know, almost every, seems like every year, but uh, yeah, constantly iterating on the machines. How do we make them better? How do we change it up? Um, so and that can kind of be told here with, with form two to the, to the larger format three L's and now, um, with form three plus, uh, you know, we just sort of are always, always working on finer tuning, you know, how can we make things better, faster, um, easier to use. So, oops, skip the slide there. Uh, so for those who aren't aware, SLA stands for stereolithography and traditionally that process is, um, you know, before form labs, this was traditionally, uh, a larger format option. So um, traditionally, the, this this process is done with a, a large vat of resin. Uh, the laser is drawing on the surface of that resin and the parts will sort of fall into that vat. Uh, so you can imagine if you needed a five inch by five inch by five inch part, you would need that equivalent volume of resin to actually hold uh, the part in there. So it made things like material changes, uh, very cumbersome and expensive. Um, and also because it was a large format machine, the, the machines themselves were also very costly. So it was a pretty high barrier to entry. Um, so the way we do it is we essentially took that process and turned it upside down um, and allow for uh, a shallower vat of resin. Um, and we actually use a laser underneath that vat. And uh, that allows for you know the same, essentially the same part quality and um, you know accuracy and things like that but uh, with a much sourer vet. So we're able to swap materials out. It can be much more versatile. There's a lot less waste that goes into this process. Um, and it's something that can sit on your, on your desk rather than in a, you know, in a factory space or something like that. Um, and you can kind of see this here. So we have a, 
uh, traditional set of, of lasers and galvos and a mirror reflecting onto the bottom of our build tank. Um, and then the build platform will sort of, you know, pull the part out of that vat of resin. So um, not only does it look really cool, but it is also, like I said, a much more efficient way of, of doing SLA versus the traditional uh, process. Um, so just double clicking a little bit more on what we've done to sort of fine tune this process. So, you know, form one and form two were, were that traditional SLA process with a lot of different mirrors and galvos, um, which worked great. And it's how traditional SLA is done. Um, but, you know, we're always talking about how to make things easier to use, you know, uh, faster and, and, and such. Um, so we developed a process called low force stereolithography, which uses a, a flexible tank and a integrated light processing unit called an LPU which allows for a lot less uh, calibration and, uh, you know, it doesn't need to be as uh, sterile of an environment. With traditional SLA, you have to make sure you clean the mirrors, make sure the gobblers are calibrated. So, you know, because any, uh, you know, any mists or any speck of dust could bend the light in a certain way uh, and create some problems. So we sort of integrated that into one unit. Um, and the flexible tank just allows for a, a lower peel force. So that, that separation force between the bottom of the tank and the, and the part. Um, there's a low force in our situation due to that flexible tank. Um, so it helps, you know, helps increase, you know, part reliability, print reliability, um, while still being able to use, you know, all the same resins that you've been using on a, you know, form twos and before. So, uh, kind of giving a, a broad overview on, on some of the benefits of, of looking at SLA over some other uh, printing technologies is, is really the high resolution and fine detail um, on our machines. You can get, you know, as fine as 25 microns, which is probably like the diameter of a human hair. So super, super thin, um, all the way up to about 200 microns for like faster prints, but uh, while still maintaining a lot of high fidelity. Um, because we're printing at such high resolution, you know, our accuracy and print quality is also very good. You know, the, the, you, know you don't see a lot of like layer lines and things you would see um, like an FDM or some other uh, additive processes, so it's much more, more difficult to see the layers because they're so thin. Um, Form Labs has a wide range of materials. I'll talk a little bit more about materials as we kind of move on. Um, and you know, because we've been doing this for so long, um, the the from CAD to print, uh, the process is is very seamless and is you know uh, as easy to use as possible. Um, and you're able to get a quick turnaround on, a, on parts. So, you know, you could get parts in hours, not days compared to traditional processes or even, you know, outsourcing to AM bureaus and things like that. You know, having a small little desktop machine can get you, you know, a, a decent amount of throughput uh, in a day compared to, you know, having to wait for outsourcing or something like that. Um, applications, really SLA sort of plays in all of them, but I'll just highlight a couple here. Um, the idea of prototyping, whether that's rapidly prototyping, kind of like what I mentioned before, with just being able to print part, parts, you know, faster than, uh, you know, outsourcing or something like that. Uh, but this idea of also functional prototyping, right? So not just the look and feel, but, you know, how does something function in, in a real world environment? Um, you're able to do that, you know, on our system. Um, rapid tooling and manufacturing aids. This is a, a, you know, sort of a bread and butter uh, AM application. The idea of any kind of jig fixtures, test fit gauges, things like that, um, you know, being able to, to react and, and create those rapid toolings rather than, uh, you know, go through traditional means, you know, like CNC machining or something like that. Uh, you're able to just 3D print them. Not only 3D print them, you can make them, uh, you know, more ergonomic, you can make them lighter, um, which has a, another whole sort of uh, plethora of benefits outside of just being able to 3D print it. Um, Dental, any kind of dental application. So, uh, you know, surgical guides, night guards, um, you know, dental models, things like that, impression molds um, can all be done on our system. We have a pretty wide, uh, you know, customer base in the dental space for that, for a lot of those applications. Um, and then the idea of, of any kind of medical model, um, so being able to do like pre surgical planning, uh, printing out a, you know, anatomy of a, a specific uh, patient and being able to surgery, you know, plan a surgery um, without having to just sort of plan it on the fly while you're sort of in surgery, right? So being able to, to sort of uh, print those models before, plan things out, which just makes um, the idea of like, in this case, like a surgery would be much more smooth. You know, they, they'd sort of done the planning on the, on the, you know, before they, they go in. Um, jewelry prototyping and casting, we do have a, 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 a selection of castable wax resins. So you can do anything from, you know, small jewelry to larger 
casting on like form 3L um, can all be sort of achieved with our cast with wax resin. So I sort of um, hinted on the workflow, but sort of just double clicking on it a little bit. Um, so really with any AM process, you need to produce a 3D file, whether that's uh, something you have downloaded off the internet or uh, develop yourself in, in, a, in any sort of CAD program and you're, you'll export out of that CAD platform uh, an STL file, which is sort of the you know, bone standard uh, you know, file type for any additive process. Um, you then would take that STL file, put it into our, our print prep software, which is called Preform, which is free to use. You can download it today. Um, and that'll let you do everything from uh, selecting a material, layer resolution, um, support structure, support densities, all of that stuff can be done in a, in preform and it could be as automated or as uh, manual as you would like. We have sort of one click print functions where it sets all of the orientation, the support structures all up for you, or you can go in and, and be more um, precise and select, you know, I wanna orient it specifically this way. I wanna put in my support structures in, in this specific uh, area and not in this area. So you can be as, you know, as granular or as automatic as you want. Um, you would then print the part, pretty self-explanatory, go to the printer, press print, um, and then post-processing. So for SLA, because it is sort of a liquid resin that we're curing, there's gonna be some residue on the part, so they'll need to be washed. Um, we typically use isopropyl alcohol to, to wash off the excess resin. Um, you then let the part dry, and you can either uh, remove the supports at that point or cure the parts and remove the supports. It really depends on the, the part you're choosing and if there's any uh, you know, you know, concerns about it being too difficult to remove support, something maybe after it's cured because, you know, because we're a single material process, um, the supports are as strong as the rest of the model. So, um, you know, we've done a lot of work on like touch point design and things like that to make it as easy as possible, but, uh, you know, some customers still will take them off before they cure. So it really depends on, on, on what you'd like to do, but, um, you know, wash the parts and then, you know, cure the parts in our sort of uh, in this in this photo, we have you know sort of dedicated solutions for for form three only and the same for for form three. So speaking of form three, just wanted to hit on some key points about uh, form three itself. So form three is our our desktop solution in the in the space. Um, it's really you know sort of the the main staple. So it's 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 easy to you know swap materials. It has the the LFS technology that I talked about. Um, and you're able to, you know, basically print anything, any material that we have on the SLA front um, with, you know, the, the ease of, of, a, of a desktop system. Um, these machines can run, you know, like we, like I showed here, talking about remote printing. So you can, you can print, you know, upload these jobs remotely if they're on your network, um, but you can also run them completely offline, which is, you know, for, uh, you know, c customers that are using uh, more sensitive uh you know, IT, so like things like the Department of Defense and things like that, um, you know, they're able to run completely offline as well. But, you know, Form 3 really is sort of our, our main staple. It's the, the sort of the one we've been doing for the longest and it's on its, you know, fourth or fifth iteration, depending on how you look at it, um, with with 3 Plus. 3 Plus um, had a couple of changes compared to Form 3, mainly in how we uh, stabilize the laser system, uh, which helps with things like clears being more clear um as well as just you know overall print speed and uh like support structure improvements were, were brought to three plus as well um form 3l is uh the l stands for you know large format right um it's about five times the volume of uh of a standard form three so really really sets itself apart for uh you know larger parts things like that um and in some cases you know multiple runs of smaller parts um, just due to the to the larger format um, but with the same sort of uh, uptime and uh, minimal supervision that you'd get from from form 3 plus as well so uh, everything you like about form 3 just just bigger um, and then we have the the dedicated uh, you know post processing steps right it's a it's a necessary step in SLA um, so you, the, you know the parts need to be washed and cured to have you know sort of the uh, you know, the highest mechanical properties they can. Um, and we've done a lot of work to automate that process as well. Um, so form wash is an automated part washer, um, you know, sets sort of a set and forget kind of thing. You know, typically uh, most of our resins will wash for about 10 minutes. Some are a little bit more, some are a little bit less, really just depends on the resin, but 
you know, generally we'll call it a 10 minutes. Um, and then form is the same thing. You know, we have preset functions for all of our resins, our whole resin library. Uh, pick the resin that you're currently printing with and it runs its, its, uh, its cure cycle. We use a mixture of heat and UV to cure parts. Um, and that can range anywhere between, you know, 10, 15 minutes up to like an hour. And again, that's really dependent on the, uh, on the resin that you're using. So switching gears to um, SLS. So SLS is a process called, uh, you know, stands for selective laser sintering, as you can tell. Um, it's sort of in the family of powder bed fusion, which is sort of just generally anything that uses a powder, whether that's metal or plastics, um, and fuses it together by some means. Um, so for our process and for selective laser sintering in general, um, this is the process in which we're using uh, plastic powders um, and taking, uh, taking them up to temperature. So in our case, it's about 180 Celsius. So we're sort of heating up that uh, chamber of powder and then using a laser to to melt the plastic and we sort of will go through a process of drawing that pattern as you can see on the right so that's the laser sort of melting the powder having a, a recoder come and spread another layer of powder on top and sort of doing the same process again um, this process traditionally before fuse has been sort of on the larger format um, so again it wasn't something that was super accessible to a uh, you know, a smaller format or a smaller price point. And then Fuse really helped, you know, condense that, make it easy to use, and again, make it more accessible to, to the masses. Um, you'll see on the left here, there's a little bit more of a, uh, there's a little bit more going on than, than with the SLA systems, right? So there's, you know, uh, there's a system to deliver that powder into the build area. Um, there's, you know, heater systems that are around it to make sure that the heat in the, in the print area stays as uniform as possible. Um, and then sort of a similar laser system set up like SLA, but just, you know, higher powered and, uh, uh, you know, sort of different setup of laser, but, you know, essentially sort of the same idea of the lasers and galvos and the mirrors bending the light to draw the pattern. So, um, it is similar to SLA in the sense that it's using those lasers, but, um, you know, Instead of curing resin, we're, we're melting plastic. Thank you for tuning in to this webinar preview from Formlabs. To view the content in full, please click on the link below. Alternatively, if you'd like to get more information on our products and services, then please visit our website.